So second in line for our coverage of the latest motorcycles for 2021 is our first look review of the KTM 890 Adventure R and 890 Adventure R Rally that were just announced last week. Now just a quick note to say, if you're new here to the Knox channel, we're really trying to put out a mixture of content from first look reviews like this, through to motorcycle reviews, through to the best riding products too. So if that sounds like it's up your street, please like and subscribe. But without further ado, we're gonna get on into it. So to start with, the KTM 790 Adventure R is the best off-road capable adventure bike that I have ever ridden. During my time with the bike, I rode further and on harder off-road terrain than I would have ever imagined doing on comparative bikes. Bikes like the BMW F850 GS for example, which I would never dream on taking the stuff that we did on the 790 Adventure R. So the base model from which these two models are starting on is very good and that is a good thing. So there are two models, the 890 Adventure R and the 890 Adventure R Rally. But for the purposes of reality and time, we'll mostly focus on the Adventure R model as this will be the volume product. The R Rally is a limited edition model of 700 units with uprated WP Explore Pro suspension with more travel, ground clearance and higher seat, a Kropovich exhaust, quick shifter and revised looks. There has been no mention of pricing yet on either model, but as the current 790 Rally model is around £6,000 more than the base one, we can expect similar for the 890 Adventure R Rally. If you want the hardest version of the 890 Adventure R, this is the place to go. Both bikes should be available in dealerships from mid-November. So reverting to the standard model, the biggest change from the 790 Adventure R is the engine. Now we tested this engine recently on the 890 Duke R and it's an absolute banger in that bike and we imagine some of that to be translated into the 890 Adventure R although the power gains aren't going to be as big with an additional 10 horsepower increase to 105 horsepower as opposed to the 15 horsepower gain between the 790 and 890 Duke. Torque has been increased by 9 foot-pounds up to 74 foot-pounds of torque. Offsetting that power gain is a dry weight increase of 7 kilos, so how much power is going to be sapped by the extra weight is yet to be seen. In any case, the new motor generates an additional 20% of rotational mass to help it with stability, but the real take home here might have come from Chris Birch who in the press launch video claimed that the new motor was much easier to ride in technical, slower terrain with much less stalling. If this is the case, this will be a major improvement over the 790 Adventure R. If there was one area that I struggled with, it was the motor stalling at low speeds off-road. And the majority of times that I dropped the bike was due to either stalling on off-camber or on steep terrain, and then the weight of the bike overwhelming me. If the new engine improves this area of the bike, it will be a really good step forward for off-road riding. The new models also feature improved electronics with the rally mode and ABS that have been revised to be more advanced and they are both now Euro 5 compliant. Based on an already great on-road package of the 790 Adventure R, we can also assume that the 890 Adventure R will also be excellent, with a commanding riding position, excellent comfort, brilliant suspension, handling and riding experience. This is genuinely a bike that you could ride all year round, mixing long travel with commuting, fast road riding, and if you fancy coming home the long way and mixing a trail in or two, the 890 Adventure R will be more than happy to oblige. With the 890 platform still being very new, there is little feedback in terms of reliability, but prospective owners will have high hopes in this area, especially those considering long distance travel. So there is a lot to like about these new machines, but there are also a couple of potential downsides. When KTM launched their 890 Duke R, everything went in the right direction. More power, less weight, and higher performance components, and boy does that bike deliver. For the 890 Adventure R, on spec sheet at least, you might look at it and think it's going in the wrong way. For off-road capability, you don't really want more power, 
In fact, most of the time you want less. And in this application, applying 105 horsepower onto loose surfaces is almost impossible. And weight wise, you always want less. Case in point, our 145 kilo 701 Enduro will outperform both of these bikes off road, albeit not be in the same league comfort or refinement wise. Also, like taking candy from a baby and akin to the 890 Duke R, the quick shifter is now an optional extra, whereas it was standard on the 790 Adventure R. And in the same way, the rally mode with the slip regulation is also an optional extra. The rally mode on the 790 Adventure R was awesome, allowing you to regulate the amount of rear wheel slip in line with your confidence level and really helping you to dial in all that power and make it really confidence inspiring to ride off road. Riders wanting the best out of their 890 Adventure R will have to tick both of these extra options. The plus side is that the quick shifter we tested on the 890 Duke R was sensational and if tweaks have been made to the rally mode, this can only be a good thing too. In all, we can assume that these new KTMs will be fantastic, building on an already really good platform and adding a little more power for on the road. Whether or not KTM has done enough to have 790 Adventure R owners swapping keys for the new model is yet to be seen. But like all these first look reviews, final conclusions will have to be reserved until we get the chance to ride one.